Hello, and welcome to Lori's Live. I'm Lori Mestis with Mestis Ministries, and I'm broadcasting live from LA, California. Great to have you with me today. Today, we're going to continue from what I shared on yesterday, and it's all about our thoughts, how to guard our thoughts, how to wrangle our thoughts, how to take them captive so that they don't take us captive. Unfortunately, if we allow our thoughts to get in and really take over, <laughs> one little thought can actually create a whole domino effect in our lives and it really could be to our demise. So it's really important to understand how to do this and how to walk with a real clear focus, with a real clear mind on how to think on the things that God wants us to think on only. And it takes some discipline. Oh, there's that word discipline. People don't like that word that much. <laughs> However, I am going to get into some things today that I think you'll appreciate and probably relate to. And I think it will help you a lot too, because sometimes we don't even realize what we're doing, like what we're thinking, and, and unless we catch ourselves, we're going to start going in a direction we don't want to go. And then there's times we don't even realize, we don't even realize why things aren't going the way we want them to go in our lives. But sometimes it goes all the way back to that little thought that tried to get in and we let it in. So we're going to talk about how to not let those thoughts in and how to really be aware of when they come. Because when they come, we have a job to do right there. So we'll get into that today. Let's pray and we'll get underway. So Father, thank you so much for this time we have together. Thank you, Lord God, that you know what we need and how to make us the way you want us to be, Father, to be not only able-bodied ministers for you, but Lord, to just walk an abundant life. You've called us to walk an abundant life and we need to understand that sometimes we are the ones that are thwarting our own success in our lives. We're thwarting that abundance in our lives because we have allowed ourselves to think things that get us out of that place of going upward and instead we're going around and around. So we don't want that. So Father, we thank you right now that, that uh, this is a session that helps us to keep learning how to take authority over our lives in every single area. And it starts right here in the mind. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Well, praise God. This is going to be good. So I encourage you to hang in there with me today. I'm going to go over a little bit what we did yesterday, just as a quick review. But then I want to get into some things that God was showing me today that I think you'll like and appreciate. Again, uh, this is all about thoughts. This is all about how to really guard our minds, how to take thoughts captive. And you know, everything that we do uh, that I share with you, uh, these aren't just things I'm coming up with. These are things that are in the Word of God, okay? They're in the Word of God. They are directives from God for us, His people. Again, so we can live in abundant lives. Uh, you know, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. Well, how many of you, if you would be honest, would say, you know what? My life isn't always feeling abundant. I don't mean financially, okay? I'm not just saying that. I'm saying just in every area, like, I don't feel like I'm always walking an abundant life, right? Say amen if you want, or oh my, <laughs> or yes in the comments, if you know what I mean. Although that should be the deal. Every day we should be walking an abundant life. But I really think that we can be our own worst enemies our own worst enemies. And you know, it's because there's an enemy that God has that comes against us. But when we start to give him any audience and give him any attention and entertain what he wants us to think and do and all that, then all of a sudden we've become our own worst enemy, you know, because now we've allowed him in. All right. So we're going to get into that. But I was thinking about this whole abundant life thing because somebody had sent me um, you know, was back and forth with me on the broadcast yesterday. And, you know, he was 
saying some things and I was saying how this whole thought life thing is so vital to our success. And I wrote this, I said, it is a life or death understanding. And if we know how to apply these principles of how to really, really police our thoughts and things of that nature we talked about yesterday, we will truly walk in the abundant life Jesus said he came to give us. So it's really important that we get that. Like we need to know that there is a way to walk in the way that Jesus wants us to walk every day, have that abundant life. But it's not going to happen if we give audience to thoughts that are not going to help us get there and walk there. Okay. So hallelujah. Let me say hello to some of you who've come on. Hello, Gary. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. Hey, Helen. Praise God. Hey, Michelle. Love you. Someone else. Oh, Pam. Hi, Pam. Love you too. Well, you know what, you guys, right now, if you click share, other people can get on because this is going to be really powerful today. So I encourage you to do so. And as we go, surely put in some comments and throw up hearts to God, whatever you want to do. Praise the Lord. This will be good. So again, if you didn't see yesterday's message, it's part one of what are you thinking, which is what I'm calling the message series this week. Uh, you definitely want to see it because it's a good foundation for where we're going today. So yesterday morning, uh, when God, when I was praying with God, he, um, he said to me, don't think about anyone, just think about me. And it was really helpful because I was thinking about a situation with someone. I'm not going to go into that. That's all in yesterday's message. But what happens oftentimes is we start to think about things that we're dealing with with people, you know, different situations or issues. And, you know, we're all thinking about it. And sometimes it's like, oh, it's kind of upsetting. And yet if we just say, no, you know what? I'm going to think about God. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to just love on my God. What happens is, is that love then starts to fill us up about that person. And then we're able to make a right choice and love on them in the same way. I mean, we're able to maybe approach the situation differently because now we have God's heart on the matter and God's mind on the matter. And so I talked about that and some other things. Well, today uh, I heard God say, don't think about anything. Just think about me. Now you could say, that sounds crazy. How can you not think about anything? Again, what God is saying to me is don't think about anything. Like all the, you know how many thoughts come in? Okay, again, I don't want to be talking about yesterday's episode too much, but there's thousands and thousands of thoughts that come into our mind all day long. It's crazy amount of number of thoughts that come in. In an hour, it's, I don't even, it's crazy. So, you know, what God was saying to me is just think about me. Just think about me. <laughs> And it seems to me that every time God says that, all those other things I'm thinking about, mm, they just kind of, they just work out. They all work out. So this is the focus is thinking about God, thinking about God. And I think that's what the whole thing is about. The more we spend time with God, the more we pray, the more we spend time in the Holy Spirit, the more we pray in the Holy Spirit, the more we are with God, we're going to be more like God. And that means that all these other things that seem to bother us or even things we have to do, or it's not even a bother thing. It's even things you have to do with your day or, you know, just tasks you have to complete. God's going to help you do those things. God's going to do them through you. God's going to take care of it all. If you just think about God, it sounds like almost so silly and childlike and elementary, but you know what? It's not that easy to do. If you know what I mean, say amen. <laughs> It's not that easy to just think about God all day long and nothing else. See, if you think about God, who is all wisdom, he's going to show you what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Probably better than you could do it on your own. Probably better than you thinking it through so much. Let God show you what to do. I mean, it's, it's really simple, but yet hard to do. Do you know what I mean? It's like, wow. <laughs> God wants us to live in that place because that's where joy and peace reign. And when we have joy and peace, then we don't have to put up with the concerns of this life and of this world that we live in and our lives at all. We just don't have to be in care about anything when we cast our care to God. And we do that by spending time with him and really hearing his, his mind, getting his mind, you know, his thoughts. He says his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than ours. Well, that doesn't mean by the way, that he doesn't want us to um, 
you know, he doesn't want us to feel like, well, his thoughts are higher than ours. Have you ever heard that? Well, you know, God's thoughts are higher than mine. So, you know, he knows what he's doing. And I just, I'm not really sure, but God knows. That's not what he's saying there, okay? He's saying my thoughts are higher than yours. So come up to where I am. Come up to where my thoughts are. Think my thoughts. He's trying to tell us. We're already seated with him in heavenly places, Ephesians 2, 6. So why wouldn't he want us to have his thoughts? Because that's where he's seated. He's saying, be with me. Think the way I think. So it's, it, I really think that sometimes there's been a real uh, misuse of that scripture in the sense that so many of us have thought, or I've been taught as well, well, you know, God's ways are higher than ours. You'll never attain to those thoughts. That is not what he is saying. He's saying, come up and think the way I think. I say up because he is up, <laughs> you know, in the heavens. He said, we're already there. And he's saying, get out of the down, get out of the, you know, the deep places you are in your thinking. Don't think so much. <laughs> as I've said before, don't think, think, thank God, be with God. And he will literally tell you what to do. He said, I'll show you things to come. He said, I'll, I'll guide you and lead you into all the truth. I mean, it's all right there. We make it so hard. Okay, so <laughs> what I want to talk about today as we continue on from yesterday is some things that the Lord was showing me about policing our thoughts, even in an another analogy with that. So we were saying that, you know, a thought, let me put it this way, like a thought will come to your mind, right? Have you ever said, oh, a thought came to my mind? If so, let me know. <laughs> but I know I said that, oh yeah, this thought came to my mind. So here's the deal. We can, thoughts can come all day long to our mind. But what we have to be aware of is we don't allow those thoughts that come to our mind to get into our mind, to now take residence in our mind, right? We don't, they may come, but we don't have to let them in. So I was thinking today about a crossing guard. You know, at school, like when you're bringing your kids to school and stuff, and they've got crossing guards, right? And they allow you to go when it's clear and they make you stop when it's not. So they put up a little sign and it says, stop, <laughs> right? When you can't cross. So I was getting that image and I wanna share it with you today. So think about it like this, a thought comes to your mind and you right then and there have the opportunity to put up your sign and say, stop. You can't get in, you don't let it in. You don't let it cross over the line, right? We can't cross with the crossing guard. No, you can't cross here. You can't cross over this way, this path. No, you can't, can't go that way. So that's how we have to be with our thoughts. You put up your little sign, stop, can't get in, I'm not letting you in. This will utterly change your life if you start to utilize this technique, <laughs> if you start doing this. I literally will have a thought will come to my mind and I will, I will literally out loud say, stop. <laughs> I've been doing this lately. Well, more so I'm going to get into some things about dialogue. You'll see. But anyway, if a thought gets, if, if we don't police the thought, if we don't arrest it, if we don't take it captive, you see, second Corinthians 10, five says, take every thought captive, right? If we don't take those thoughts captive, then they're going to get in. They're going to enter into our mind, okay? We can't afford it. We can't allow it. Now, let's just say a thought gets in. How does it get in? Because we went, oh, hmm. And you start to give audience to the thought. When you give audience to the thought, now that thought gets into the mind. It's not just showing up, coming to the mind. Now it's going, oh, thanks for the open door. I'm going to get in there. Now, the devil... You know, he's defeated, but he's still sneaky. He still tries to kind of, you know, rear his ugly head in our lives. And that's how he gets in one little thought. I'll just give them one little thought. That's all I need to do because they'll just take it and run with it. Wow. That's what happens. We take it and we run with it. And guess what? We're running the wrong direction. We're running in a race we'll never win. We'll be defeated. We'll be defeated. <laughs> the ones already who's defeated is giving you the thought. And then what happens? You feel defeated in your life because you've given audience to it. You've allowed that thought in. Mm, mm, mm. Not good. <laughs> Are you guys with me? Not good at all. So here's the deal. The thought gets in. Now you're thinking about the thought 
And what happens then? If it's even, even if it's a thought, like again, about let's say things that you have to do later up and coming, but then you get anxious about it because you're thinking, oh, I got to get all this done. That brings in anxiety. All right. Then you don't have peace. <laughs> all right. I'm just giving you an example. It could be any thought, any thought you meditate on other than thoughts that are of God or as, uh, uh Philippians 4 verse 8 says, think on things that are lovely, honest, just, true, praiseworthy. Think on these things and the God of peace will be with you. So we can have peace all the time depending on what we think about all the time. Say amen if you agree. <laughs> Seriously, we can have peace all the time if we think on things that are lovely, honest, just, true, if anything has praise or virtue, think on these things. And when we do that, it says, and the God, God will give you peace. The God of all peace will bless you. He will give you peace. Oh my goodness. That's powerful right there. Powerful peace. Powerful message right there for us. So let's just go back a moment. So let's say the thought gets into our minds, right? Now what happens? The more you meditate on that thought, the more you think, meaning think about it, the more you think about it, the more you think about it, here's what happens. That thought gets in your heart, right? Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks in his heart, ready? So is he. Oh my gosh. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Well, okay, that's a problem. <laughs> because now that thought that, you know, was not a peaceful thought for you, perhaps. And now it gets into your heart. Now, guess what happens when that happens? First of all, isn't it weird to think that you think in your heart? Like as a man thinks in his heart. Well, that in itself is so interesting to me because we think that we think in our minds, right? But when we meditate on it, it becomes a seed. And now that seed starts to grow and it gets into our heart. Now we're going to run into problems because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. All right. So Luke 6, 45 says, um, what you say flows from what's in your heart. Okay. We're going to say, we're going to talk about, um, the, the other scripture that talks about where, um, that out of the heart flows the issues of life. Okay. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. Proverbs 4, 24. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So again, the thoughts get in there, they get into your heart. Now, what's gonna happen? It's gonna come out in your life. And out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks, and Jesus said, a man will have whatsoever he says. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Are you with me? <laughs> this is crazy when you think about this. All right, so essentially, it's a vicious circle. I'm gonna go this way. Vicious circle, right? Goes in the mind. You think about it. You think about it. You meditate on it. You entertain it. Okay. Now that thought gets into your heart. Now that thought comes out in your life. In other words, you're going to act on that thought that's in your heart. The very thing that you don't want to do or the emotions will follow that you'll start feeling emotional about that and that those emotions aren't going to be healthy for you. Whatever it is, it could be an action, could be a feeling, but it's all going to come up and you're going to experience it in your life. So it's like, I want this way. <laughs> it's a vicious circle. Some say a vicious cycle. Synonymous, right? We get kind of caught up in this vicious cycle. It's vicious. Interesting word, right? Vicious. That is not a good word because that's a bad, you know, when something's vicious, it's ferocious, it's attacking us. Our own thoughts can attack us. Our own thoughts will literally turn our lives either up or down. Our lives will literally go up or down depending on what we're thinking. We could, that's why I'm saying we become our own worst enemy when we allow our thoughts to dictate to us how our life is going to be. My goodness. Okay. So I wanted to share with you about that vicious cycle or circle. And I want to discuss that with you for a moment as something else that God showed me. You know, how many of you have ever thought, gosh, I keep going around the mountain. We may have said it. We say it because we know back in the day that the Israelites were 
set free, right, from Egypt. God delivered them, and they were in the wilderness with the purpose of going to the promised land. He didn't just have them go to the wilderness and camp out there just, you know, to get out of Egypt. There was a purpose, there was a plan, and there was a direction for where they were headed, and that was the promised land. Well, God's promised us all a promised land, a promised life here and later, right? But why is it that so many times we're not experiencing that? Or why do we feel sometimes, oh, I keep going in circles. I'm not getting where I want to go. If that's true about you, you've experienced that, just say yes or <laughs> whatever you want to say there. But yeah, I know that like, I wonder sometimes like, what is going on? Why am I not getting there? Well, you know what? One of the main culprits of that is what we're thinking and the fact that we've allowed that thought to get into our heart and now it's coming out into our life. Because oftentimes we will speak, right? I, I said that scripture right here, that what you say is flowing from what's in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And then we're going to have it. Proverbs 18, 21. There's power in life and death in the tongue. And those who love it will eat the fruit of it. So we're going to eat the fruit of what we say, but that fruit actually started in our heart. Okay. My goodness. So as you, you, you with me, so that's what's happening here. We have this thing. So we're kind of going around and around. We're not getting where we want to go around and around. Yes. Here and now. Exactly. We keep kind of like going, why can't I go up the mountain of God? Why am I going up and then down, up and then down one step forward, two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. It's because we're going around and around because of this vicious cycle that's been going on. Thought gets in to our mind. We meditate on it, gets in our heart. And then from there, it comes out into our life. And that's what we experience. Now, I was thinking about Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8 says, it says to meditate on the word day and night. Day and night. That means all the time. Day and night, right? All day long. Meditate on the word day and night that you may purpose to do all that is written therein, for it is there where you will make your way prosperous and there where you will have good success. You'll make your way prosperous. You'll move forward into the promised land. You'll make your way prosperous and have good success when you meditate on the word day and night. Here's the problem. We are not meditating on the word day and night if we are meditating on these other thoughts that come in and now we're camping out with those thoughts like the Israelites camped out in the wilderness. You know why? You know why? Because they weren't meditating on the promised land. They weren't excited about, they were, medita they were meditating on their problems and they were complaining. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they were murmuring and grumbling. Mm, mm, mm. Well, you know what? I believe that that's exactly why they didn't see the promised land. Of course, they, you know, were disobedient to God and they were, you know, created an idol. There was a lot of things. But one of the main culprits of that was the complaining, murmuring, and grumbling. And you know what? <laughs> I want to discuss that with you today because, oh my gosh, I'm going to bring something up to you that has happened to me a lot. And God is like shining this light on me, like as if I'm in the operating room and the lights are so bright and God is doing surgery on me like every second of the day, which I said, okay, I get, I'm like, yes, I want to be all you want me to be. So do what you need to do. That being said, I'm at the grocery store today and, you know, I'm in the produce department and you know those little bags, little plastic bags, and you have to like, sometimes you have to fight with them to open them, right? It's like, oh, you know, and I don't know about you, but I know for me, sometimes I'll like, you know, lick my fingers just to kind of, it just somehow or another helps to open the bag. All right. <laughs> Well, <laughs> say yes, if that, if you do that too. Well, you know, when you wear masks now in the grocery store, it's, you know, how do you go licking your fingers to open the bag? It's like, oh my gosh, I gotta, you know, how do I, uh. so I'm trying to do it without licking my fingers to, you know, give it the, give it that like friction to open the bag. So <laughs> finding myself kind of like going, and literally today I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. I literally said it out of my mouth. This is ridiculous. And I was frustrated. I was murmuring. <laughs> I was complaining, not to someone, not about someone, but about the bag and that I couldn't even lick my fingers to do it. <laughs> so, all right. I don't know if that ever happens to you, but I find myself like literally speaking my complaints out to myself, but it's coming out of my mouth. 
So if it's coming out of my mouth, that means I'm thinking it already here and it got here and now it's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> So I was, I've been thinking about dialoguing lately because I do this a lot, even in my home. I'll be like thinking about someone or a situation with someone or even with my son. And I'm like creating, there's a dialogue going on. I'm actually saying it out loud. I mean, not like loud where people can hear me, but like out loud, like, you know, maybe you do it under your breath. Maybe you don't ever do this. But the fact is, if we do this, that means that we've allowed the thought to go from here into here and now it's coming out of our mouth, which means it's not gonna profit us because it's usually not necessarily a good dialogue or it's what I'm gonna do with the situation and you're thinking it through, you're trying to figure it out, now you're talking it out. But typically, if you go to God about it, you're not gonna end up doing the thing that you're saying out of your mouth when you're concerned about it or when you're you know, <laughs> upset about it. So I decided to call that demonic dialogue. <laughs> It is. It's demonic dialogue because it's not the dialoguing that God wants me to do. He wants me to be dialoguing with him. He wants me to be talking with him about it. Okay, instead of me talking about what I'm going to do or how this conversation is going to go with this person or whatever, I'm, you know, God's saying, come dialogue with me about it, my dear. You know, he's like, come dialogue with me. So what I would instead do, okay, Lord, you show me what to do about this. I'm just going to give it to you. Do you see how that's different? But that's what happens. And then we're, and then the complaining, <laughs> you guys see what, all right, if you've ever done that, I want you to tell me, because I'm like, am I alone in this? I don't know, but just say me or yes, or I get it. <laughs> because seriously, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. That, those little, little things, those little places where we get irritated, or like I said yesterday, aggravated, that is not helping us get to the promised land to live abundant lives in Christ. If we allow ourselves to go there, it's because it's it's a trigger for us, you know? We get we get like upset too quickly or you know, irritated. Hmm. All right. So, I want to tell you what I just looked up. You're going to laugh when I say this. All right. Well, let's see. <laughs> but anyway, I was thinking about murmuring and grumbling and complaining cuz I, you know, you wouldn't think I'm the kind of person that would do that, right? <laughs> guilty. Helen says guilty. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I don't really complain to people or about people out loud or to them. Oh, but inside, I guess I do. Let me rephrase that. I do. I don't like that I do. I don't want to be like that, but I find myself doing that. Well, this is not helping me. <laughs> this is not positive. This is not healthy. And, you know, the whole idea about complaining is why the Israelites never made it to the promised land. Like I said, you're complaining about your situation, even though God totally took care of them out there, but it wasn't good enough for them. It wasn't how they wanted it. It wasn't what they thought it would be. So they complained, you know, okay. Heck, that's terrible. I mean, that is so not what God is wanting us to be like. Philippians 2, 14 through 16, it says, do everything without murmuring, complaining, fault finding, and grumbling. Do everything. How many things? Everything. <laughs> everything without murmuring, complaining, fault finding, and grumbling. Wow. So I was thinking about, um, I knew there was like a cartoon character that like, you know, he's like kind of does that funny grumbling sound. <laughs> it's like, yeah, who was that? Because it made me think of that. We could do that if we're not careful. We may do that. You may do that. Well, it's time that we really take stock. We, we like put that stop sign up. When thought comes in, the stop sign up. When, you know, we we're going to start going there. Nope. No, nope, I do everything without murmuring, complaining, fault finding, and grumbling. Thank you, Jesus. Well, anyway, I looked up, this This is funny. I looked up, uh, I did a Siri search and I, I asked Siri, who was the cartoon character that grumbled a lot? <laughs> who was the cartoon character? And she gave five cartoon characters that grumbled. <laughs> but the one that I was thinking about that I, I looked up and it's so, you know, that I, that I got to and I was laughing, but it's the Tasmanian devil. Interesting that that's his name, right? The Tasmanian devil. He was notoriously known for his lack of patience and his short fuse. Oh my gosh, his short fuse. 
Now for me, I never would think that, I just don't even think I'm that way. Oh, I don't have a short fuse, you know, I'm patient. Oh my goodness, seriously, hello, reality check reality check. I guess I do have a shorter fuse than I thought. I guess I do have a, more of a lack of patience than I thought. And I just want to help you today. You know, we, we don't realize that sometimes we, we think we're a certain way, but then when you need to, you need to listen to yourself. You really do. This is the test. Start testing yourself, like start listening. And when you hear yourself dialoguing with yourself, like I was thinking even about the dialogue part, I'm talking to me, myself, and I. We're having a little conversation, a convo. And it's not a good one. <laughs> no wonder it's not going in the right direction. So here's the Tasmanian devil. You know how he does it. <laughs> if you know who he is, you can look him up. Oh my gosh. And he's like, you know, always, you know, irritated and grumbling and stuff. And, and you know, I thought about the fact that that's exactly what the devil wants us to do. He wants, this to, he wants us to grumble. He wants us to murmur. He wants us to complain. You know why? Because he wants to keep you back from the promised land God has for you. He wants to keep you back from everything that God has for your life. Because all you need to do is start doing that and doing that. And the devil, he just sits back, kicks up his feet because he just gave you one little thought. And what you did was you let that thought come in because you entertained it. And then it started bothering you. And then you started speaking about it and grumbling and complaining. And now you have... A problem with that situation if you don't give it to God, if you don't repent about that way, because God can't do anything with that situation if you already have brought sin into the situation, because that's sin, because we're, we're not in faith. We're, we're frustrated. We're not in love. Ugh. So now we're not honoring God. Wow. Okay. Well, I think that's enough for today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I pray this ministered to you today. I pray this helps you. We've got to really, really be on guard. We've got to guard our minds and our hearts. We have to guard them. The crossing guard. That's what I was referencing earlier on when I started. The crossing guard says, stop. We're going to be crossing guards in our own life. No thought can cross the line that doesn't honor God. Murmuring, complaining, fault finding, grumbling does not honor God. Do you see? That's not honoring God, and it's not helping you. So if we're going to go up the mountain, if we're going to get into the promised land, it's time that we get serious about these little things that seem little to us, but they're not because they have babies. And then, then you know, it's a seed, and that seed grows, and it roots go down into your heart then. And then it's really hard to kind of pull those roots out later. So get it, get it right away. Get it right away. Nail it right away. Guard it with your stop sign. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. We thank you, Father. Oh my gosh, thank you that you care about us so much that you show us these things from your word and you bring light. You bring light. That your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So Father, thank you for illuminating this topic to us, illuminating this understanding to us today, that we could actually start to take charge of our thoughts. We could start to really allow, you know, allow ourselves to be actively involved with disciplining our thoughts, our minds, and most importantly, our thoughts that come in. We can discipline them. And we thank you for it. We thank you, Father God, that we will put this into practice and we'll enjoy it because we'll see it for what it is. And then we can go to you with it and repent about it and ask you to help us to be free and walk free, Father, so we can indeed experience abundant life in thee. <laughs> in you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I hope you guys were blessed by today. You have authority over your own thoughts. Amen. Thank you so much for coming on. If you were on live with me, hi, Lisa. Good to see you. Hey, Mervin. Praise God. Nice to have you guys as well. Anyone else that came on? Hello. I, I, I didn't see your name. It goes, kind of comes and goes. So do me a favor. Even if you came on after a moment, go back to the top. You want to see the whole thing. Trust me. You really do because it will help you to understand it all. And oh, Dan, you're on as well. Hey, Dan. So uh, also, thank you for sharing it with people. Let's help the body of Christ. Let's help anybody. This is such a great topic. If we could get this, wow, we'll be so free and do what God's called us to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So thank you for loving it, sending the love on to others. Bless other people. 
And if you're watching from YouTube, thank you so much. Share it, comment, let others know. Thank you for liking it there. And you guys definitely subscribe and click notifications so that you can get more videos coming to help you succeed in life. Love you guys. Blessings.